eliminate everybody who does not move back in. But they have to be consistent about termination. But basically, if you set a policy like that, you can't have exceptions. And that's the more damaging part. Yeah. Again, all this assumes, by the way, there's no such, there's no employment contract, like individual employment contract with the employee. But in the absence of an employment contract, yep. Amazon is going to be pretty well positioned. Do I dress my jaw, dog up like a child? No. He's wearing a thunder shirt right now. Whenever there's thunder, he gets anxious. So it's like a compression shirt that makes him feel a little bit better. It, it works well. Steely, back-end customer contracting for medical devices. Med, we do like med tech around here, just saying. Soaring Kiwi, you would like the back-end. <laughs> Someone say money. Wait, if Amazon fires people who refuse to move back, do they still get severance? That's a Amazon decision. Most companies tend to provide um, severance, by the way. Severance is very rarely about the people who leave. It's almost always about the people who stay. Keep that in mind. But um, they almost certainly will qualify for unemployment. Although it gets really interesting. What state do they get to collect unemployment in? <laughs> but yeah. I'm sure Amazon would would grant severance in a situation like that. Okay, here she you okay. Tim says, you don't think companies have to pay severance? No. Severance is almost always optional for companies. And smart companies always pay severance. True story. When I when I interned at Exxon Mobil, Exxon Mobil, the default, like you could get caught drunk on the job and you were going to get severance because you signed away the ability to ever basically both work at them or any of their contractors or ever get the ability to sue or take part in any class action lawsuit. Exxon Mobil is like, fine, give you a month full of salary to avoid ever having to speak about you again. We'll take that. We have enough money. We have a lot more money than we have patience to ever deal with our name being in a newspaper for a negative standpoint. Yeah, if you wonder why I know all this shit, it's because I, I, I've unfortunately um, been on the side of, of plotting and planning a lot of these layoffs. You heard they have you sign a release. Every single company which does severance, correction, every single smart company which does um, severance, absolutely. They're not just giving you the money for fun. They're not giving you money for your past work. They're giving you money so you will never have the ability to sue them, period. Period. Yeah. The release is included with the severance. In fact, it is dependent the severance itself is almost certainly dependent on signing away. Walk overload. It hurts to hear people sign away things for a month worth of pay. I I've seen much more generous severance agreements, but I, I don't know what you would expect then people to get. Like when people say like, well, then fine, I'm not going to accept this month of severance. I'm going to go hire a lawyer and spend a lot of money to then bring you to court and spend a lot more money to then claim what? That it's, quote, unfair. Most of the American employment relationship is at will, meaning a company has the right to fire you. I know. I mean, keep in mind, the real logic, by the way, behind why companies do severance agreements, uh, severance, particularly why companies do good severance, right? Good severance is, again, not for the person leaving. It's for everyone who sticks around. So that way, if people are worried about, oh, my God, one of these days, the company may fire me. At least, you know, they treated people well on the way out. Walk over love, but agree to never work for, say, ExxonMobil and none of their contractors. Yeah, that's a rule. 
If ExxonMobil ever terminated you for certain, they don't, not, especially cardinal safety rules, but there's a lot of circumstances where ExxonMobil is explicit. Like, and they, they do this for a reason, <laughs> right? So, and I know this story because, and I can tell the story. Um, while I was an intern there, there was a specific incident what happened or one of the contractors was like opening up a valve or something like that. He was working more than six feet off the ground. And we have a cardinal safety rule, which says if you are ever working anywhere near six feet or more off the ground, you have to be hooked in or tied to stop yourself from falling for distances, say six feet. He didn't tie off. Something came out, hit his head. He wakes up in the hospital. Our plant manager was there telling him all his medical costs are taken care of. The ExxonMobil family wished him the best. By the way, he will never, ever work at any ExxonMobil facility, either through direct employment or as a contractor, because he violated a cardinal safety rule. He was told that by the plant manager in the hospital. I know you're going to say that's fucking savage, but seriously, that's some dumbass shit. That guy could have died. Excellent value. You keep saying good severance. What's a company that sucks at severance? <laughs> I think Bed Bath & Beyond, the severance they offered, was that the one that was going around? There was some other company. No, I think Yellow. Yellow severance looked terrible. That looked horrible. Beast Dad, you mean that's just OSHA? It wasn't really OSHA. Twitter. Chem Life. Suncor just kills the employees it doesn't want anymore. That's some savage shit, my friend. Not that I'm saying you're wrong. Just that it's savage. But yeah. I mean, like, yeah, all the places I've ever been to, I've literally done the spreadsheets that determine severance. Like, put it this way. The places I've worked at, every single layoff I've ever helped work on, Honestly, the people who were departing, not by their choice, none of them I thought were treated unfairly. None of them. By the way, yellow stock is down today. Off the bankruptcy filing. Down 30%. Like people just realized now they're going bankrupt? And you always bailed after big layoffs. It's not a bad strategy, right? But yeah. All the organi all the layoffs I've ever been a part of were generally speaking, shall we say, I, I think they were they were like optimization or trimming. I left Sears Holdings before they did their big layoffs. I left Sears Holdings before they truly started circling the drain. And that one was really easy. Caffeine asked me, why am I tweeting at Bed Bath & Beyond Apes? Because if I can help one of those motherfuckers, I'll sleep better at night. That's all. That's all. I know. I'm making a mistake. Trust me. I've gotten shit on in their forums. I've gotten people calling me moron, chill, making dumb comments, etc. But you know what? All it takes is one of them realizing they're in a fucking cult. If that happens, I will sleep better because I do not like where that situation is going to end. And by the way, let's be clear. They will all have it coming. I don't want to see it. I'm not cheering for them. Yeah, Kai, yeah, he's a fucking, he's a mass shooter waiting to happen. Go Rebs. Morons losing money is anti, it's fundamentally deflationary. That is correct. That is correct. I'll let them to their own devices, but yeah, they're going to learn the hard way. Yeah. But I'm going to do what I can to stop like straight up lies and grift, at least to, to, to push back on that. I mean, to be fair, caffeine, if you're going to call that out, call out the other thing, which is inside stocks and good God, they're fucking morons.
They're talking about NVIDIA earnings, right? And I specifically mentioned, I track semiconductors. They're going to fucking blow it out of the water, right? And someone made the comment, um, hold on, where is it? Yeah, TSMC makes their chips. TSMC gave flat guidance. NVIDIA gave boom guidance. Insert picture of lady with mass symbols around her. And I'm like, AI only makes up 5% of TSMC's revenues. TSMC's guidance was due to the current inventory burn on mobile phones. The guy says, but TSMC makes NVIDIA chips. NVIDIA said they were anticipating a huge increase in sales. Your position assumes a massive slowdown in mobile chip sales, AMD and console chips to explain NVIDIA's projections. And it's like, you're fucking wrong, dude. So yeah, let them. Billy, Jay's frustration with V-Bears has devolved into arguing with apes on other subs. The funny thing is, is I don't advocate buying NVIDIA. I don't sit there and say NVIDIA is undervalued. I don't even sit there and say they're fair valued. But when you talk about the business performance, yeah, NVIDIA is going to crush it. The business. The stock could totally go down because anybody with a fucking brain should know this. The problem is inside subreddits like stocks, there are a ton of people without fucking brains who say, oh, TSMC makes their chips. TSMC did not guide up by, what, 11 billion, therefore NVIDIA must fall. And it's like, good luck. Sultan, I'm not going to read that comment out, but yeah. Yeah. What people think Jensen is lying. I'm going to do my best. Load up into puts. Yeah. That's what you'll do is that you'll go into these, and I've seen you do this. You'll go in and you'll say like, oh my God, imagine how much money you'll make with puts. And I'm just like, oh, you're going to die. Now, here's the interesting question, by the way. Let's talk about NVIDIA for one brief second. Does NVIDIA go up tomorrow based on SMCI tonight? Prometheus, somehow they also missed TSMC. I know. People have broadly misunderstood TSMC's guide. And that's fine. People have broadly misunderstood it. I don't like how they communicated it. I think they did a shit job communicating it. But yeah, tonight, was it tonight or tomorrow? Super Micro's up tomorrow, right? Yeah, Super Micro's tomorrow. And that gets spicy because everything Super Micro's gonna talk about, all their bullishness is due to their partnership specifically with NVIDIA. So the question becomes this, if Supermicro guides up, does everyone realize that's really good for NVIDIA? Or does the fact that they're not going to guide up to the same degree NVIDIA guided, is that going to hold NVIDIA back? Because people don't realize Supermicro is not the only hardware partner they have. You bought KTOS, why? Why? There's some news on them. What's their product? Thank you. You stand by TSMC is simply too conservative. I agree. Someone said money. You wonder that TSMC guide 50% AI chip revenue can be broken up between AMD and NVIDIA for 2026, 2027. Yeah. Prometheum, I agree 100%. Well, there was a comment we read out what last week where I believe it was Bernstein pointed out there is a chance that NVIDIA alone, data center alone for fiscal 2024 could grow between what was it? 50 to $65 billion. Just their data center business for next year. They just guided essentially seven to 8 billion on data center alone. 
And for a full year, they're going to go between 50 to 65. I think that was the number. Holy shit. Like, if that's the case, NVIDIA's cheap. That's what's fucked up. That growth would be stupid. Someone say money. Bernstein has a $475 on Target. Yeah, Target on NVIDIA. They came out with the right after. Yeah. Not only that, they're they're like the lowest on AMD right now. Uh, cool. Can you give me the too long didn't read on BioNTech? Sure. So BioNTech, it's as simple as they posted a really big year-over-year uh, -year decline. And that's why they're getting punished. Um, they also had to write down inventory, which is obviously never a good thing. Yeah, so this quarter, they had about 168 million pounds. Last year, the same time period, 3.2 billion pounds. Not pounds, sorry, euros, euros, not pounds, euros. Yeah, AMD fanboys don't like Stacy for his rating, agreed. Promo, what's the run rate? 2023 runway we're gonna find out my i mean what this is the second quarter for this fiscal year right so you're talking about calendar 2023 i think it was like somewhere between like what three to four billion q1 i think they had five billion last quarter i think their guide base of like four billion their guide is like seven to eight billion essentially this quarter I think people said the only way they only guided like top line, by the way, they only said like 11 billion whole, but I've seen people extrapolate that and say, okay, then that's seven to 8 billion data center. So three plus four plus seven, on the low side, say 14 um, plus one more quarter for the uh, full year. Oof. Nasty. Nasty numbers. So assuming they pull the same shit they basically pulled, you're talking about what, a $23 billion business? That more than doubles next year? It is a more than doubling. It's wild. That's wild. What's going to punish people, by the way, is everyone saying like, well, NVIDIA to the moon. Nope, at some point they'll have a digestion cycle. So then they'll fall. It just it's that's how semiconductors work, particularly them. Anyway, I agree with Prometheum, by the way, about um all I, everyone should know this. This should not be a surprise. Caffeine, what's this? US revolving credit contracted in June for the first time since March. Rarely falls outside of a crisis or an end of cycle recession. Interesting. I'm assuming this is a year over year data point, right? No, maybe not. What is this measured in? Is this a year over year thing? Because of course, if it's a year over year thing, it's getting bull whipped from down, up, down. I don't know though. It's a flag, yeah. Either way, I'm not freaking out about it. I think PMIs, the ISMs, CPIs are much more important than just this. Also, we've been blasting people with enough panic about, quote, recessions, etc. We already know the savings rate started going up. And if people actually contracted mildly, um, their usage of credit. That's just consumers taking advantage. Yeah, Tim says, have those stops, uh, stops set up and sleep tight. Yeah. Where's the spy at? 
That means we go around the horn for earnings and see what the takes are. Sure. It's a good idea. Tonight, Palantir, Lucid, Skyworks, Chegg, Paramount, Beyond Meat. All right, don't care about Beyond Meat. Palantir, what is everyone's thoughts on them? Palantir, I am bullish on what their commentary will be. However, I do not like the stock or the company. Then again, they've been kind of getting beaten up recently. You own too much to do anything. <laughs> Hopefully they make money. By the way, that, that's the important thing, which is Palantir is now transitioning into one of them companies that actually make money. Problem is they'll still dilute the shit out of people. They bounce at the right place at 17. Yeah. The thing about Palantir is, is that they have a very compelling story about organizing data for AI usage. That is real. Okay. That is real. I don't think that, I mean, if the expectation is this is a company that's going to guide akin to like what NVIDIA guided. No, they can't. Their business is not quite frankly that scalable. Your wife went beyond meat and ran off with your girlfriend. That's a great one. Yeah. No clue what Palantir does. I'm anticipating very bullish commentary. I don't know if that means they guide like up or anything. Like, I just think they'll talk very optimistically or positively about AI usage. Any given day, if you put a gun to my head to buy a long-dated position in Palantir, I'll always go short. I'm a hater. Straight up. Pond Kitchen, you feel like they're the they are in the position, or yeah, they're in the position to be the premier AI solutions provider for the government. Yeah, my concern is I don't know what kind of moat that actually generates, and it's not like they're the only um company in that position i think you have accenture booze hamilton etc you have a lot of different like consultancy companies you have microsoft you have amazon aws google a lot of these companies can play in that same space but i'm a hater we've acknowledged that by <laughs> beyond meat was your first stock wow Missed out on this run. I'm okay missing out on the run on Palantir. Yeah, Go Rebs is correct. Everyone knows Palantir's got the good, good government contracts. The problem is, what's their commercial business pipeline looking like? I said Booze Hamilton. I didn't say Lewis, did I? I thought I said Booze. I didn't say Allen, though, which is my mistake. Booze Allen Hamilton, yeah. Their government ties are the moat, and that's the problem. It's not really. Who's out? Hamilton. God damn. This was the play, apparently. Shit, I was tempted to buy um, Tyson this morning. I told myself I was going to stay out of making any 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 plays today. But yeah, look at them. Yeah, Microsoft and Google already have deep, deep government ties. Doesn't Microsoft and Amazon currently share like the biggest like software contract with the government with their um, um, cloud contracts? Yeah, well played, Prometheum, well played. Your first was Activision. Ooh, like the next day the scandal happened. Oh boy, I know what you're talking about. What am I waiting for the market? First of all, I'm like 50% in the market right now on my DGEN account. And a lot of that's because my Raytheon position got stop lost. So some of my shares positions uh, exited, but I'm, I'm in the market. I'm just, I'm not looking to add. Most of my exposure now has been rolled to October. I have still some Septembers, et cetera. 
Tim, you spend $100 on analytics to make $20. Sounds like everything my, my, my past employers have had to do. God, Tim, you might appreciate this. I was at Hershey's and I was invited in on a meeting uh, when we heard from our head of data science about the fact that Palantir was pitching us to build a new um, data lake, a virtual data, uh, data lake data, slash data warehouse. And this is, keep in mind, this is like 10 years ago, something like that, eight to 10 years ago. And that was right when Palantir was getting kicked out of the Coca-Cola contract because their people were just grotesquely unprofessional. So like we kept hearing that and we're like, no. Paramount's going to say they saved money from the strikes. Yep. Yep. Back to earnings. So Palantir, I, I, I think more of you are bullish than bearish, by the way, which is interesting. Lucid, is anyone bullish Lucid? They just announced big price cuts on their entire range. Is anyone bullish on Lucid? They're up down 4%. Like, how much bad news is not in this stock? The real question is, do they have to issue shares or did they tap the Saudis again? I don't know. I assume there's nothing good that comes out of this. This might be priced in. Then again, do we get a going uh, concern notice tonight? The Lucid Air looks good. Yeah. No, the cars look good. The problem is they are bleeding cash. They, I, I'm pretty sure they need cash. I know they've previously done an offering. I don't know what the status of their, their cash flow is. You forgot that company still existed. So did a lot of people. Next up, Skyworks. 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 Skyworks is interesting. I would be tempted to actually go against them. The problem is, first of all, valuation-wise, this is not an expensive stock. And also, you'll notice they dropped. I believe they dropped with Apple. Skyworks has major, major concentration risk. I believe over 50% of their revenue comes from Apple. It's all of that non-Apple income I'm actually more worried about. Uh, playing for pretty long. I think it takes like a few hours for it to go. I have a script that basically uploads it but I think it takes like a little bit. So yeah, Skyworks, I, again, I'm not playing it. I would probably be bearish. The problem about playing against this one is Cuervo did really well and Cuervo actually guided up. And in a lot of the non-Apple business, Cuervo and Skyworks competes. Now, my understanding is Cuervo has a much larger industrial um, segment than Skyworks. And that may have been, been what pulled them up. Yeah, I'm guilty of hating on Skyworks. Didn't we almost get butt fucked on that one? Yeah, I believe so. Doozy, you feel even more bullish about Palantir earnings since it dumped? Good luck, my friend. Yeah, this is what the stock looks like on a daily. Right? Keep in mind, valuation-wise, this is not an expensive company. Take care, Steely. This is not an expensive company. But yeah, I don't... I don't like them. Give me some guy. Do I get nervous before interviews? Yes. If it's, if it's important enough to do, you should probably feel a little bit of nerds, nerves. It just tells you that what you're doing, you care about. That's all. By the way, interviewing people, we know people are nervous. Like good interviewers are aware of that. If someone cannot function during an interview, you can't just sit there and say, oh, that's because I was nervous. Because then all of a sudden it's like, great. Then anytime this person's going to go to work, the second they get nervous, they fall apart. Being nervous doesn't give you an excuse to fall apart. Never. But like interviewers know and they can account for, oh, they're just nervous.
But we're cheering for you, Cream. All right, next up on the earnings, Chegg. C-H-G-G. This is an interesting one. Guys, AI alert. AI alert. Someone said, Money, you were told by a guy that who had interviewed you that he seemed like such a nice guy, but then he started working with you. <laughs> yep. High of the day, end of day. Yep. Your spreadsheet's doing games, man. Silky has Chegg calls, and I kind of like the play. I get it. I get it. For those of you wondering why the fuck do you play Chegg, they've had some announcement about incorporating generative AI and all of a sudden the narrative around them switched to company that was going to get buried by AI made completely inconsequential to AI to now, wait a minute, this is the company, they provide education materials and services. So all of a sudden the fear was, why would they exist when you can use chat GPT? Chegg's answer was, fine, we're going to generate our own AI based on our own data and our own materials. So now you log in and you get the equivalency of a chat GPT trained on their materials specifically. It's actually very clever. Market on close and balance, $242 million to the sell side. That is so small. So small. Yeah, Caffeine, can you check options activity for both Skyworks and for Chegg? Skyworks, it's annoying. It's SWKS. I hate saying stock might soar, but dead company in less than two years. Interesting. I don't fully put it this way. If they didn't, if they don't incorporate AI, they're dead. Absolutely. 100% agree. This is like an Adobe situation, though. If they use it, it works, right? Like, that's the only way as a business they survive, is they have to, to drive differentiation. Someone say money, but is their data set so unique? Well, yeah, if, it's, if their data set, if their materials specifically are basically held behind a paywall, and i.e. other things have not been trained on it, then yeah, probably, I would assume. Just breaking. Class 5, solar flare hits the earth, rendering all EVs permanently inoperable. To be fair, any EV that gets rendered inoperable is probably going to be parked next to normal ICE cars, which will also be rendered inoperable. Spy ripping faces. How you doing, doozy? I love you. Spy's trying to fuck going into the end of the day. Heroes not available for Skyworks. Those fuckers. Yeah, that makes sense. What is an ICE car? Internal combustion engine. So a normal car. What if I start? Shut up. <laughs> I think some people actually did play Airs Yo-Yo again. Still, by the way, under 50. Not, okay, even 1976, then yes. Then yes. The problem is at some point your truck's going to die and there's going to be no replacement parts or no one who knows how to fix it. So you're going to have to know how to fix it yourself, which you probably do. Someone say money. I like that argument. Yep. There's one thing to having a data set unique, but you also presenting info in a good manner. Yeah, I would agree. Cons Academy doesn't have anything unique. It's just how it presents. Yeah. Uh, TSMC is green. CHGG tag. Heard you, you <laughs> nice. Air IV is jacked. Oh my God, yeah. 
December $30 put still go. Oh my God, that's cheap. Not on check out. Check on these nuts. <laughs> All right, folks. Less than a minute to go on the day. Less than a minute to go. Twitch streams. Tag was just to buy, sell, or use school books. Apparently, it's more than just that. Looks like the Bulls are in control. 450 was the pivot point today. The more interesting one is tomorrow morning data dog. I'd be bullish on them, but I don't know enough. I'm more interested to see what their commentary means for Palo Alto. And time. Bulls win. Well played, well played. The Bulls win. Give you your point by KTOS instead of Datadog. I don't know about that. I know at one point, by the way, this was a meme stock. Jesus, look at that. NVIDIA with the afternoon recovery, yep. Qualcomm actually did a lot better than it previously was. Palo Alto, eh, still sucks. Tesla recovered quite a bit. What did NVIDIA look like into the close? Look at Palantir go. For your guys' sake, since more of you are bullish, I hope they do well. By the way, what time was their earnings? Palantir is at 4.05. Skyworks is at 4. Yeah, Skyworks is the one we want to look at now. Palantir shouldn't move for a bit. Um, first reaction is up. Twitch streams. Why is Palo Alto taking a beating? Two reasons. Number one, they scheduled their earnings call for Friday after the market closes. That is traditionally not a good thing. Um, second of all, Fortinet did very bad and more importantly called out deals were slowing. Enterprises were still slow to spend on IT. So that's considered, quote, not good. I don't know how true that'll end up being. Maybe the market's just freaking out. Um, Skyworks is green. They're bouncing around, though. Skyworks, there we are. Does that have the... Um, see, unfortunately, the company releases never talk about um, like whether they beat or not. Revenue was $1 billion. Earnings per share... 173 uh, record operating and free cash flow for the first three quarters of the fiscal year because this was this is a third quarter yeah we expect double digit sequential revenue and earnings growth in the September quarter okay so they're guiding up from now looks like the stock is up what are they uh what was the expectations All right, here we go. Um, inline slight miss on revenue, beat on EPS, guiding up very slightly uh, next quarter on EPS. Looks like a, either an inline or a slight guide down on revenue next quarter. But the fact that next quarter they expect to be bigger than this quarter is important for them. They had to do that. That's what you're looking for for semiconductor companies to say, at the bare minimum. Any semiconductor company who is not guiding to quarter over quarter growth is going to get like negative 10%. And they will deserve it, every one of them. All right, yeah, Skyworks is up, not much. 
Kind of boring. Volunteers dumping. Oh no, hopefully not for you guys. What? Oh, is it real? Is it real? I don't know how real that is. I see it bouncing around. Yeah, I don't think their earnings are even out yet. No, Qualcomm did not deserve its 10%. Qualcomm guided next quarter up over this quarter, which is what they had to do. Not 405, but companies can release early. But yeah, I don't... Yeah, no one's got numbers out for them yet. Whoa. Now it's dumping. Bro, the guide was up a little bit over uh, quarter to quarter. Skyworks is now red. Well... Yeah, Palantir is now down 10%. I'm assuming their numbers came out. Can we trust Peter Thiel? So beat on EPS, miss on revenue. Revenue is the most important. If it was up, it was up barely. And on EPS, yes. Basically cost cutting, which we knew would be the case. Palantir is announcing a $1 billion buyback. The balls. They will issue two billion worth of stock and then buy back one billion. Keep that in mind. You do want to see a buyback though. Just you want to see them be anti-dilutive. Hey, D shares, hey to my friend. New high of day after hours. Wow. All right, here we go. Revenue. Uh, I see a slight beat. EPS even buys back a billion. Where's the guide? Where's the guide? Chegg is pumping. Sees fiscal revenue. Sees fiscal year revenue. I don't know if I agree. Palantir's down over 10% right now. I don't know. I don't know. Put it this way, they did not guide up and they did not clearly beat. And I think a $1 billion share buyback for a company in their position is not necessarily a big thing. <laughs> Tim says, oh, the CIA is getting a billion now, huh? Chegg is pumping though, you guys say, huh? Chegg, really? Pumping? Boom, 11 and a half? That's not bad. Palantir valuation going to earnings. Every company that's making the shift to profitability, it's always going to look like that. Palantir was always outrageous, though. Palantir was always outrageous. Paramount's up 4%. And Beyond Meat, what direction is Beyond Meat going? Beyond Meat is beyond fucked. They are down. They're down big. Behood, Chegg needs to talk about how they're using AI to help with their dying platform. 100% agree. Chegg is fucking now up 15% in after hours. Paramount with the beat. Beat on revenue, beat on EPS, subscription revenue up. Premium, not even on a price to sales basis. It trades higher than other companies growing. Yeah. Not only that, how old of a company is Palantir? That's the bigger issue. Palantir is almost like an Amazon where it seems to get away with some shit other companies wouldn't. But meanwhile, Palantir is like a 15-year-old company, something like that. Altrix is a really interesting company. Pretty big beat on EPS. Was Altrix getting um, acquired... Polenta, back up to 17. Nice. 
Lucid, miss on EPS, miss on revenue. Yeah, 20 years. You love Polenta? Yeah. For those that don't know, Polenta is what some of you guys call Palantir. I find it hilarious. Yeah, Beyond Meat, Beyond Fucked. All right, they're down big. Fuck them. Uh, Lucid is not exactly shitting the bed. They were already down going into their earnings print. Cotera Energy. Miss on revenue is not a good revenue miss. And they are, um, production is up. LEA, three insiders sell after hours today. Senior VP and CFO, EVP and President Seedings, SVP and President E Systems. Okay. Polenta these, yeah. I got Polenta of these nuts. We got a fourth quarter to be down. Is that sequential or year over year promo? Because I'm talking about sequential. Robinhood now offering a 3% match on IRA contribute. How long do you have to keep that in there? Palantir bouncing back. That may not be a shock. Like, put it this way. I have an issue with Palantir's value. I have an issue with the company, period. But based on what their earnings are and what their guide does, it does not look like they've substantially missed or beaten. Palantir looked like, quite frankly, was pretty close to in line. It's boring. And maybe for a company who's had this type of stock action, maybe you need to guide up. That's understandable, right? That's understandable. But maybe I'm just a hater. I'm a hater. Uh, Lucid misses EPS and revenue, and it's up. To be fair, though, with Lucid, didn't we already know their delivery numbers? So I'm pretty sure Lucid's already been dropping um, after delivery numbers were already basically released. I think Lucid, everyone knew it was a shitco going into this. So that might be why, oh, they're up big. If Lucid, all Lucid has to do is say, yeah, this quarter sucked, but we don't need any more of your money. Maybe that's what. Chegg, slight miss on EPS, very slight. Um, beats on revenue, kind of slight as well. Subscription services revenues decreased, okay. Interesting. Yeah, now loose it's fucking. Yeah, Palantir is so close to its 52-week high, so it needs to get pounded. Got to clobber the polenta. Yeah, Skyworks, I'm just calling the whole thing in line. That's what I'm saying. At a certain point, a company, the valuation of a company, like a company may currently trade here and you could either say like either the company is worth zero or a lot more than it currently is. Maybe that's the case with Lucid, right? <laughs> Jack and Blast. He said chat was bearish on Lucid and bullish on Palantir. To be fair, I don't think anyone was necessarily bullish on Lucid, but yeah. SKYT Skywater is up seven and a half. If anyone is trying the Autismo Superconductor exposure plays, I don't think they have. I've covered Skywater before. Wow. Is that a fat finger or is that real? I don't think they have. I don't understand their uh, superconductor exposure. 
With respect to the company's previously stated target of achieving cash flow positive operations within the second half of 2023, in lighter of greater than expected customer and category headwinds and their anticipated impact on net revenues, the company now believes this is unlikely to be met in the stated time frame. Oh no. Hey promo, I wonder if we're gonna find that Beyond Meat again has negative gross margins. Is that Asianometry uh, video on the superconductor good? Yes, he does excellent work. John from Taiwan does excellent work. I watched it last night. Yep, Beyond Fucked. Do people actually eat that Beyond Meat garbage? No doozy, and that's why they miss. If more of you fuckers would eat their bullshit, the company would go up. Skywater is up on earnings report. Okay, so there was an earnings report for Skywater. Yeah, I, I'm gonna, like all the people I know to my life who've been like vegetarians and vegans, the idea of like a heavily processed, essentially just turning like seed oils into like a solidified form, none of them would have done that shit. You eat impossible burgers all the time, ugh. See, uh, stop being mean to vegans. No. I dated, I dated a vegan once and that relation, there's been very rare situations where it's like, yeah, the food difference between us ended a relationship. It did. And Chegg is now at plus 30%. Well played, CSAE. Well played. Massive sodium. Yeah, don't forget that. The salt bombs. Yeah. Based answer, but okay. It's a cult. Yeah. So it looks like Skywater is going to break even today. Chegg might close the gap. Holy shit. Looks like Chegg was the play. Silky is going to be happy. Hold on. Let's, uh. Why is Chegg mooning still? There are go are they? Ted's business model is so easily disrupted by uh, GPT. Well, aren't they, isn't what they're doing though, specifically incorporating them? What's funny is when you travel to like more rural areas and vegans still think they're entitled to that culture. <laughs> yeah, you go to the South and some of them trucks drops and there's not, you have fresh fruit. Otherwise you're fucked. Uh, true story. Uh, when I lived in China, uh, my roommate, she was from America. All right. We both worked at the same school. Um, she came over and she was a vegetarian. And it was funny. Early on, she went to a uh, restaurant and we had like some interpreters with us. And she asked the interpreter, like, this is the first time we've been around this interpreter. And she's like, yeah, go ahead and, and ask him what they have with no meat. Uh, I'm a vegetarian. So the person like asked the, uh, the server, I knew enough Chinese to know the person basically asked back why <laughs> he's like, you know, no meat. The person's like, why <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. Patty G did make an insider buy, by the way, he bought, like, like $275,000 worth of Intel. I think. See, uh, most of your peers use Chegg was literally posting their homework questions as I'm smart Indian dude with terrible English would solve it for them. Yeah. Just 250,000. Okay.
bean sprouts three times a day. Yep. Lots of tofu. The problem she kept learning was how many places used lard in the preparation of tofu. <laughs> Yeah, Chegg. Maybe Chegg's going to start some level of decline, but all in all in the day, Chegg's up over 22%. They're doing well. They seem to be the winner today. Meanwhile, Skywork, eh, roughly flat, which I think feels fair. Feels fairish. Uh, Polenta, back down a bit. Why was Google chatting today? Yeah, for fun, right? Because it's fundamentally a great company. I don't know. You're from Asia and usually only monks are vegetarian. Ooh, I went to one of those Buddhist temples where they served up a chicken dish and a, a beef dish, which of course was not chicken or beef. It was all made 100% with essentially tofu. It was so good. Holy, I, I didn't even know. I got told afterward. Take care, Steel Go Kegs. You thought tofu changes your sex now. There's a um, uh, an urban legend that there's an uh, is it like a hormone specifically or, or some kind of the impact of soybeans on the human body is such. What people don't realize is the amount of soy amount of that like hormone to actually impact your body in a negative fashion is way more than any human can possibly consume. Do the frogs eat tofu? Yep, frogs doing the sex changes, right? Frogs, fucking frogs. Five, nine, big beat. It's a good beat. Good for them. Down 10%, what's the guide? The thing I think we're learning, guys, unfortunately, this is the opposite for poor Mike Wilson is that you're seeing companies who are doing a lot better on EPS than they're doing on revenue because these companies had so much fat to cut, so much cost optimization that their higher profitability, essentially their operating margins are up. Even though inflation's going down, that's the exact opposite of the Mike Wilson negative operating leverage argument. To be fair, I told, I said this would happen six months ago. Now it gets interesting when companies hit the limit beyond what they can cut. If that inflation continues to go down, do we actually see the Mike Wilson negative operating leverage come in? But to this day, that man's call was predicated around the idea that companies would not change their cost structure. And he's been proven very wrong on that one. Not even about how the market would respond to it. Just the idea that there would be negative operating margin. Tim says, that's a good trick for one quarter. I can go for more than one quarter. They can go for more than one quarter. But yeah. Eventually, though, you're right. It runs out. Him and hers. Gap. Slight beat. Revenue. Beat, not much. Subscribers grew 74% year over year, up 16%. Wow. Hey, whatever Palantir's saying is starting to work, apparently. I don't see how much it matters. All right, folks, let's wrap up the stream there and check out what our good friend Jay Jared's up to. I'm assuming he's done with his training this week, so yeah, he's streaming. Lucid is now up 5%. Good for them. Anyway, guys, I will catch you all tomorrow. Data dog tomorrow morning. That's the most important to me to track to see how Palo Alto and other enterprise software plays too. But otherwise, see you guys tomorrow. Bye.